This project has been a roller coaster. It started when Herd of Physics informed neural networks, PINNs for short. Essentially, neural networks that are trying to predict various physics simulations, ranging from particles to fluid dynamics all the way to protein folding. I wanted to create one myself, but it ended up going in a completely different direction. First, what do I even want to create? What's the project? The idea was to first create a simple PyTorch particle physics simulation, then training a neural network to predict it. The computation flow, or whatever you want to call it, will be structured like so. First I choose to make zero-dimensional dots, consisting of two numbers, x and y coordinates. Those particles will be contained in a PyTorch tensor that I will call the world tensor. It will look like this. Each one of these rows is a pair of x and y coordinates that correspond to a single particle. So the number of particles can be changed just by adding or subtracting rows with random numbers. It's possible to move the particles by adding and subtracting values from their coordinates. To move every single particle at once, we can generate a tensor of the same shape as the world tensor and add the new one to the world tensor. If we choose the values in the new tensor just right, we can simulate forces such as gravity, momentum, friction, etc. Because of that, I will be calling the new tensor the force vectors tensor. So for example, to progress the simulation by one frame, we can take the world tensor, which contains all the particle positions, pass it through some kind of function that I will write later, get back the force vectors tensor, and add those force vectors to the world tensor. As for that special magic function, let's first clarify its task. Its input is a collection of all the x and y coordinate pairs for each particle, that I call the world tensor. And its output should be a tensor of the same shape as the world tensor, only this time, instead of position coordinates, the output tensor needs to represent the exact values that, if added to the input, will result in the simulation progressing by one frame, accounting for all the physics forces I want to implement. Let's give that function a name, get global vectors. And to code it, we'll break it down into two parts. Part 1 of 2, calculate the vectors for a single particle. This was done by a function that inputted the index of the target particle, then added up all the distances from that specific particle to the rest of the particles, and finally returned the inverse of the distance sum. This function was called get single particle vector. Part 2 of 2, using that function I just wrote, calculate the forces required for all the particles at once. This one is simpler. We just loop over every particle, apply the get single particle vector function to it, and save the result. And this is it we got the getGlobalVectors function working. Unfortunately, it runs pretty slow. So I was like, chat GPT do PyTorch. And boom, we got this amazingly optimized PyTorch operations only version of getGlobalVectors, which can seamlessly run on the GPU because all of the tensors are handled by PyTorch. I just can't get enough of this function, like particle physics without a single python loop. But anyways, moving on. Let's run a few tests and see if it's good enough.
That looks pretty weird. Identify two main issues. Number one, particles don't have momentum. This can be fixed by saving the force vectors that the function outputted in the previous frame and adding those previous vectors to the gravity forces in the current frame. Time some kind of setting value so we can always make the momentum bleed off a bit to simulate friction. And the second issue, when particles get too close, the gravity forces get really extreme. And this results in either not a number or infinity values. This can be fixed by instead of using an inverse square relationship for gravity, using a custom function that I got a friend to write. That new function doesn't approach infinity and has more customizable parameters. Let's check it out. much better. The original plan from this point was just to make a neural network that takes in the same parameters as get global vectors and returns the same ones as it. Train that network and see the results. I ended up abandoning this idea because firstly it's literally impossible to make the network more efficient than the normal way because just in the first two layers of the network it does n squared operations by definition. That's the same number of operations that get global vectors does to compute the whole simulation. And secondly, I just could not get the network to do good results. It's a shame to just throw away such a beautiful function though. So I tried running some large-scale simulations, relatively speaking, and see if particles would form into interesting shapes like galaxies and such. But everything I ran mostly ended up being a clamp of particles in the middle of the screen, oscillating through the middle. At this point, I noticed that get global vectors actually doesn't have any dimension-specific operations. By dimensions, I mean not the number of dimensions that the world tensor has, but how many coordinates each particle has. So in a 2D world, we only have x and y coordinates, but the function actually doesn't care if there are z or w extra coordinates. The number of dimensions is controlled by the number of columns in the world tensor. The real problems only start when trying to somehow visualize a high dimension simulation. The easiest approach that I ended up using with some modifications was to take the first two coordinates as positional coordinates, meaning that they would be directly responsible for the positions of the dots you see on the screen, and just ignore all the other dimensions. You can think of it as not being able to see depth in a 3D world. it was getting pretty obvious that I wouldn't make any discoveries in higher dimensions. Because using this method, most information is still hidden from you. So to fix this, I decided to use the values from the higher dimensions to color the particles. First I implemented the feature to make particles darker the further they are from the camera in the third dimension. This is like a fog that makes it harder to see the further things are away from you. To visualize 5 dimensions, I decided to use the first two coordinates for positions and the other three as RGB values. And you can think of this as particles being closer together, the more similar their color is. For example, blue and purple particles are really close to each other, but the red and green ones are quite far away. Let's try some examples. First thing I noticed is that the higher the dimension, the less particles interact with each other. I think this happens for two reasons. First, 
because we don't clearly see those other dimensions. We might just not be able to understand what path each particle is taking. Therefore, we might just not be able to see most interactions. And the second reason is that the higher the dimension, the more ways the particles have to avoid and go around each other. Another really interesting discovery I found is that if I add a slight repulsion force when particles get too close, they stabilize at a distance when the repulsion force exactly cancels out with the gravity force. That makes sense, but after experimenting for a bit, I noticed that in two dimensions, particles always arrange themselves in an equilateral triangle type formation. The number of particles doesn't matter, nor do their initial positions. Stepping it up to three dimensions, we see that the particles also arrange themselves in only a single stable shape. This time, the shape is made up of four dots, arranged like so. I didn't make a visualization for four dimensions yet, so let's go straight up to five. And unsurprisingly, few particles also form into such a shape. Only this time, the usual six dot shape, which is what's supposed to happen, is not the only one stable configuration that I ran across. I also found some that were 7, 8 or even 9 dots. It's unclear to me why the strand only starts in 5 dimensions. For an explanation, let's go back to 2 dimensions. It is of course possible to arrange particles to be stable in a square, not only a triangle, but then they will be in a so-called unstable equilibrium meaning that the slightest nudge will immediately collapse them back into a stable equilibrium, which in this case is a triangle. But in 5 or more dimensions, in rare cases it seems that particles get in a stable equilibrium even if there are more dots than the usual number of dimensions plus 1. This might be related to the fact that a table to not wobble needs to have 3 legs on a 2 dimensional floor and a table on a hypothetical 3-dimensional floor will be in the most stable configuration with 4 legs arranged like so. Basically, number of legs equals number of dimensions plus 1. Just like the dots in the simulation. The dots also keep the same shapes. They might be rotated differently, but still the side lengths of the polygons they create are always the same. This is all neat and everything, but I don't see any galaxy formation happening. What I want to happen is for particles to somehow start spinning together and flatten into disks. In the real world, this process is mostly driven by dark matter and a little bit by interstellar gas. The stars themselves play almost no role. Simulating dark matter is something that sounds too out of the scope of this project, but I did try some alternative methods. I tried to first make a force that gives particles a push in the direction that other particles nearby are traveling to. So for example, if you have a particle standing here and another one flies by close to it, the stationary particle will get a force pushing it in the same direction that the flying particle is moving towards proportional to their distance. This didn't work. The particles just act kinda weird. What did come out of this experiment though, was this bug. For some reasons, the particles make this weird trail type thing. I don't know why it's happening, but here's how it looks like in various dimensions. Back to trying to create galaxies. The next attempt at this, I just spawned a few more hundred particles and locked their position to my mouse, in order to try steering them around somehow. 
either because of a skill issue or just because this approach was flawed from the beginning, no galaxies forming here. This whole project took way more time than it should have, mainly because things constantly weren't doing what I wanted them to do, and also having zero experience doing physics simulations. Regardless of the result, everything is open source on GitHub, the links for that can be found in the description. Everyone is free to use this for whatever purpose they might need it. Thanks for watching.